At three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, Kenilworth Road, home of Luton Town FC, is no place for a pessimist. If there is one currency which abounds in a football stadium, it is optimism. Optimism that the team will win. Optimism that they will make it to the top of the table. Underlying it all, optimism that the club will survive the crisis which is squeezing the league as never before. For Luton, as for every other league club, the one inescapable economic fact of life is the cost of players. The market worth of the Luton squad is about £2 million. Wages for players may account for three quarters of a club's expenditure. To meet that kind of bill has meant that 56 of the 92 league clubs lost money last season. For Luton, high wages and high transfer fees are the price of remaining in the first division. You know, if he wants to do it, you know, we'll, we'll give him every opportunity. But Luton's manager, Dave Pleat, knows that in this club, resources are limited. He can't afford to make an investment that he cannot defend on financial as well as footballing grounds. And if we can get him for under 100, I would be happy to do that deal. The 100 his old club have asked for Mike Newell actually has three noughts on the end, but Luton have managed to bring them down from that figure to £80,000. It's down to you. Wish you well. Opportunity. Good luck to you. Luton spent over £860,000 in the transfer market last year. But the club's boldest investment was not in men, but on some 13,000 square yards of artificial grass, a completely man-made playing surface. Paradoxically, the new pitch will help to secure the future of football here by reducing the club's dependence on the game as a source of income. Luton's synthetic turf is scarcely affected by wear or weather. Unlike traditional pitches, it can be available for commercial hire any day the club aren't using it for sporting and non-sporting purposes. Last year, to every £7 earned by Luton's players, this man added £5. Bill Tomlins is Luton's commercial director, organising a myriad activities to support the football. Everything from lotteries and sales of programmes to large sponsorship deals with industry. His side of business will be the biggest beneficiary of the new pitch. We hire our pitch out for what a lot of people think as little as £100 for two hours. This has involved the local community, local business uh, companies playing football on here, local schools. We've had um, Cubs and we've also, in fact, fathers have had birthday parties. The opportunity to play on a first division pitch in this way at this rate has been marvellous. The uptake has been terrific. However, I mean, we still have to look from the commercial angle of uh, the use of that pitch. And I'm pleased to say that uh, we've now actually arranged with the local uh, American football team, the Luton Flyers, that Kenilworth Road will now be the home uh, of the uh, American football team. Yes, um, as you know, uh, part of our overall um, uh, redevelopment plan uh, for this coming summer was the building of the executive suites. Another money-making uh, ploy, private executive suites. Luton is planning to build 28, available on three-year leases for up to £24,000 each. 34 other clubs have similar developments, but several have found difficulty marketing them because of the government's ban on all alcohol in spectator areas. Luton's boxes will have their own separate bars to allow their occupants to drink legally. Even so, it could be some years before these little earners start to pay a dividend. Uh, I think that this particular club will, in the end, when I say in the end, in the next few years, become sufficiently profitable for us to take it to the USM, yes. And you'd like to focus on that on the stock market? I would focus on the stock market. Once we can make a million pounds of the profit per year, and I see no reason why in three or four years from now we shouldn't, then we will certainly float it on the USM, because I think that by floating it on the USM, all the fans uh, can have a st stake in the club, their club. Without them, there is no club. As the clubs learn to live with lower attendances, commercial sponsorship is becoming ever more important. But there is some anxiety that money from this source may be increasingly hard to come by. Nevertheless, Luton have shown there are still good deals to be done. Bedford's, the American-owned lorry builders, are Luton's bigger sponsors. They're paying the club £750,000 over the next five years, and not for reasons of sentiment. I'm not really a, a mad, keen football fan. I go and watch Luton occasionally, if, particularly if we're sponsoring uh, the Mac, so that's not the reason for it. In business today, you can't make judgments on 
let's support them because they're local people. We have evaluated it. We think the investment we are making is really paying off for us. Perks for sponsors include pre-match entertainment in one of the club's hospitality suites. A similar standard of comfort is available to any private individual for a modest £550, a price which includes a seat at every home match. Also for sale, a player's eye view of the pitch. This is part of the package of treats available under a special one-match sponsorship deal to parties of up to 74 at around £25 a head. Luton have managed to carve up the whole match day into a dozen different sized saleable portions. Uh, this is in fact the players' office, this is where they report to. Even the players' dressing room, the private inner sanctum at most clubs, is on show to those who've paid enough money. This afternoon, the club's most highly paid workers are matching on the field the work rate of the commercial department behind the stands. The first ambition of Luton is to establish these players as one of the top teams of the first division. But post-victory euphoria won't help Luton achieve the financial goals. In the battle for sponsorship, they're competing simultaneously with all the other 91 clubs. With everyone dipping into the same pool, there may not be enough to go round.